Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Jesus reminds us to watch for the signs of his return. Today, we will explore further what we are seeing in our times that line up with what signs he said would indicate the potential of the end and his return. We will also discuss the practical meaning of this as we watch and as a remnant, prepare as he so leads. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Uh, here we are on uh, End Times Friday uh, toward the end of October, and there's big, big, big news since the last time we taped, uh, which is right. uh, Israel. We'll talk about that. So that's kind of big, big stuff. Um, I am uh, actually uh, in your neck of the woods. I am yeah, in, you're uh, only about an hour and 15 minutes away from me New right Hampshire. now. <laughs> we're, doing, uh, we're doing an abiding retreat uh, up at Dave Dunkel's place up in Holderness, New Hampshire, which is mm -hmm. the the uh, he's on that lake, you know, where they filmed on Golden Pond. Squam Lake. Squam yeah. Lake. Um, so it's beautiful. They have a. Uh, we were actually at a restaurant last night called Walters. <laughs> oh, I love Walters. Uh, which, which is uh, named after the fish from the movie. Um, yep, and it's so, right there on the water. It's right, beautiful. Right on the water. So it's a beautiful uh, place. And uh, the fall, uh, I'm surprised because uh, I just got back from Europe. It's where's all the colors. I uh, don't know. I'm telling you it's something to do. I don't know, understand how it all works, but the weather this year was just so wild that we've got some colors, but they're muted, but it is nothing like it normally is this time of the year anywhere. In fact, going down into Massachusetts, it's more colorful than it is in New Hampshire right now, which yeah, is weird. It's really strange. I was expecting all these beautiful colors. It's green. It's, uh, it's still green. We got little pockets, but uh, yeah, nothing as vibrant as normal. Yeah. We, um, you know, we're staying overnight at Dave's and uh, Linda and I, uh, cause we like that. We like it cool and cold, even mm -hmm. cold at night. So we open, have our windows open. So I get, I get woken up probably about three o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah. In Europe time. <laughs> uh, I'm still adjusting, but, um, there's a big, uh, there's a, an animal growling. I mean, <laughs> really growling. It wasn't sure it might, maybe a bobcat. Uh, although it sounded to me like a bear. Yeah, there's uh, lots of bears up here. I mean, just across from our cul-de-sac, we'll see them even. Yeah, yeah, is, uh, you know, and I was I was hearing him for quite a while. And I was thinking, man, Linda's really snoring loud. <laughs> <laughs> I realized. Poor Linda uh, got blamed for the yeah, bear. <laughs> yeah, and I thought, no, that doesn't, that doesn't seem right. You know, and I was, you know, hey, this, this, this sounds coming from outside. Uh, so uh, that was, that was sure funny. Um, but, uh, the big news is, uh, Israel. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, you know, since we've been, uh, taping, um, uh, now about a week, a little bit less than a week ago, uh, they were attacked, uh, by, uh, Hamas. Mm -hmm. Um, and remember, um, you know what? I'm going to just clarify so that people know timeline as they listen to this. We, because Rich has been traveling, we are now taping this October 12th. So it's about a week fresh, but it's, you're still not, the listeners aren't going to hear it till the 27th. So yeah. I just want to put it in perspective so they know where we're, it's going to be, we're at it's going to be even, about. even later news by the time they hear this, <laughs> um, uh, but, but we are going to reflect on it. Um, so, um, remember that the, uh, the Muslim world is split between the Sunnis, uh, who are the more moderate, uh, and that would be mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, uh, Jordan, uh, Egypt, uh, they would be Sunni and they're more pro Israel and pro, uh, West, uh, per se, although they're still, you know, underneath it all right. recognize that they have an opposite uh, viewpoint of uh, mm -hmm. faith, um, and then there's Shiite, right. which is the what we what we would term extremist, and the goal of of them, particularly as they're as they're led by Iran, which by the way, uh, because of what happened, partly this is this is being happened because of the funding that that uh, U.S. released 
to mm -hmm. uh, Iran for six billion dollars, which uh, some of that, and and it's been documented, and even even spoken that they're they're taking this money, and using it for arms, mm -hmm. again against Israel, because the the goal is to eliminate Israel off the face of the earth. Right. That, that's what they would like to do. And so, if you look at geographically, um, you've got um, Israel um, on the uh, east side of Israel is Jordan. They they would be uh, Sunni and moderate. Next right. next to them is Iraq, and they're split between Sunni and Shiite. Okay. Um, uh, and then next to them is Iran, which is Shiite. Um, okay. And sh and Iran is the one that you know is really promoting the terrorism. Um, okay. Does Hamas come out of that? Is that Fueled by Iran? Yes. So they're okay. connected uh, and their funding for the terrorism is coming from Iran. Okay. And if you look at Israel um, on the south, which would be right between Egypt and, and Israel, is called the mm -hmm. Gaza Strip. Right. And Gaza has been occupied by Hamas. Mm hmm. So, um, their their barrage of missiles, and this is like thousands of missiles that were le unleashed in the last week, right? Uh, are from the south, attacking them. And then the one thing that they did this time that they generally don't do, is that they put ground troops, mm -hmm. and attack cities, and they went after civilians, and and particularly right. old, older people, uh, women, children. Uh, they've killed, you know, right now, Even babies, babies, yeah. a thousand people, and um, they've attacked cities mm -hmm. with ground troops as well as. Right. This, and they're taking yeah, hostages, taking, all over. taking hostages. And they have a barrage of missiles mm -hmm. because of the Iron Dome. Now, the, the interesting thing is that um, they have been fairly successful with, with the, what they call the Iron Dome, not completely. Uh, mm -hmm. Because of the of the magnitude of it, but they've they've extinguished, you know, most of the missiles, but mm -hmm. but several of them have gotten through, and then the ground thing. But the interesting thing that's going on is that they're therefore consuming Israel's stocks of arms mm. because they're using it to fight it. Um, okay, so that's the south. Um, so just. <laughs> The last couple of days, remember this is, you know, last couple of days being in the 9th, 10th, 11th of October, mm -hmm. um, Hezbollah tied to Iran, tied to Hamas, mm -hmm. they're in the north in Lebanon mm -hmm. and they're started fighting um, from the north to occupy Israel and they're a little bit more cautious mm -hmm. because they're not sure where they really want to go with this and do they want to risk Israeli uh, retaliation? Right. So have they, have they attacked at all? Or there's they just have, buzz they have, of this? They or? have attacked. No, they have attacked, but okay. not, not in a big way, uh, okay. in a small way, but troops in Israel are now in the South and in the North and they're trying to protect their borders, you know, with the missiles. Right. Um, so it could escalate and really impact Israel because mm -hmm. if they get hit on both sides of this, um, the big the big issue, which is interesting enough that America is is sending arms to Israel right now, mm -hmm. um, is there you know if you think of warfare, mm -hmm. it's resources to be able right. to wage the war. Well, in in our kind of war today, you need missiles, you need mm -hmm. ammunition of all the arms and uh, the Hamas attack depleted a big, big, big portion of Israel's arms. So right. if, if Hezbollah, mm. Hezbollah attacks from the north, it would even deplete it further and cause right. them to be weakened. And again, you could look and at- And you've got this divided two fronts that you're working two, on Two fronts. Too. And yeah. then you've got Iran that could easily launch missiles even from Iran. So if you looked at a, just at a war strategically, mm -hmm. um, at the moment, because of what Hamas did, what Hezbollah could do, what uh, Iran could do, 
mm -hmm. is they could they could literally overwhelm Israel, uh, hmm. just be, just out of sheer numbers and magnitude. And truly, if if they wanted to, particularly if Iran really has nuclear weapon, which which they we don't have that proven yet. They we know they're developing it, but they probably don't have it yet. Uh, they could attack, you know, with a nuclear weapon. By the way, Israel has nuclear mm -hmm. weapons, right? Um, so they could go, they could go the other direction. So, um, if you looked at at strategy of war, this would be a moment where, if they were going to try to annihilate Israel, they mm. they could do it uh, if they were successful in waging south, north, and from the east, mm -hmm. um, and overwhelm them. Um, now right. we know something from the scriptures, right? That doesn't happen, right? Uh, so we know the outcome of this is that they're not going to be wiped. But out looking the in the natural, we can see the yeah. scenario line up. Yeah, but yeah. we can see God's word on the other. Yeah, and then remember, um, go back to the 1960, what's called the 1967 war, mm -hmm. and this is where uh, now at that time there weren't really missiles. Uh, it was it was more uh, just firefighting uh, with you know uh, guns and weapons, but it was sheer numbers. So mm -hmm. uh, you had Lebanon on the north, you had Jordan on the uh, east, and you had Egypt on the south, um, along with Iran and Iraq. Right. They all came against Israel in what's called the Six Day War. This is a Six Day War, right? Yeah. Um, that on the surface. Mm -hmm. There's no way that Israel should have made it, and they should have right. been defeated, which is what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But in six days, they won the war, mm -hmm. and they gave, and the other other parties gave up, right. uh, which was a miracle, you know, a complete miracle. So we know that as we as we follow this, and by the time when this airs, everybody will have known probably what happened, because um, mm -hmm. it's another you know it's another 15 days from the time we're taping this to the time it airs, lots going to happen in 15 days. Right. And we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep uh, talking about this. Yeah. Can uh, I ask just yep. a logistical question, if you don't mind? Yep. And, you know, I apologize to all the viewers for my ignorance of the Middle East, but um, the Gaza Strip and West Bank, are those part of what God would have ordained as the promised land? Yes, uh, they are. Um, so those are borders that man has made that God did not ordain. Well, they're no, um, they're officially part of Israel. Okay. But they're occupied by right. pal by Palestinians. Okay. Um, and in the in both places, there is there is in a sense a co occupation. So there's okay. in the uh, what's called the West Bank. Um, there is, uh, pal there is a strong Palestinian uh, communities, mm -hmm. but there's also Jewish communities there. Okay, right um, in the middle of both of them. Yeah, and, and okay. this was part of the, it's been part of the uh, uh, conflict mm -hmm. because uh, Israel, Jewish Israel, uh, purposely went about building settlements in the mm -hmm. West, ba West Bank to right. try to, to try to get more Jewish people in the same place as the Palestinians and not allow mm -hmm. them to overrun it. Right. Uh, the Gaza is is pretty heavy Palestinian. Right. And there are there are Jewish communities that are nearby, by the way, which is the ones that they went and attacked. Right. Uh, now, all of that is part of official Israel. OK. Um, and uh, if you think of um, the United States mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the state of, of Alabama or Mississippi, mm -hmm. you know, we consider we consider those southerners. Right. Um, and they're part of the United States, but they're also kind of a community that that has a certain you know a bit uh, of their own culture their and, own culture yeah, yeah. That, that's a good way to put it their own culture well that's the way that israel is done is that the israelis uh the jews primarily uh lead the lead the government but from these other factions 
Mm-hmm. Because they're a democracy, the Palestinians can vote. Okay. And there's even a Palestinian party that um, is part of the government because they got some votes. Mm-hmm. Uh, remember, we remember we talked about the coalition, right? Uh, that right. you have to, you have to put together these different factions. Well, it includes Palestinians, mm-hmm. uh, but they're not big enough to to really over overrule you know, the entire Jewish nation. So it'd be like, uh, you know, the senators from Alabama and Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're Southerners. They can represent Alabama and Mississippi, but there's not enough of that to sway by 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 themselves to say, well, we want want the government to be run this way. Uh, So they have Mm -hmm. a say-so, but they can't do it. But because of the uh, terrorism, Mm-hmm. that exist and the uh, uh, anti-Israel, um, they then purposely try to come against the Jewish leadership and mm-hmm. other other places in Israel that they're, that they're attacking. And when they occupy these cities, go after these cities, they know who the Palestinians are and who the Jewish Jews are, and they're going after mm-hmm. the Jews. Right. Uh, so that that's what's happening right now. So would you say, like, I know this sounds so ignorant, but do, does Hamas have a strong presence naturally prior to this happening of living in the Gaza Strip? Or they is do they occupy that area? They do. Uh, they okay. uh, they occupy it. There's cities. There's there's, uh, you know, uh, they've been attacked. Uh, Israel has attacked in the last couple of days. They've attacked probably a couple thousand locations. Okay. You know, and they're specific mm-hmm. buildings and places where Hamas okay. Hamas is heavily concentrated, okay. and where their supplies are, and so they've attacked them, uh, and are trying to destroy them. And uh, and interesting enough, um, think of the uh, in the in the analogy we're using, uh, Mississippi and Alabama. Mm-hmm. Okay, well. There's called the national grid uh, of utilities. Right. So the Fed, if they wanted to shut off the electricity and water right. to Alabama and uh, Mississippi, they could. Right. Because they. And this is what Israel has done to Gaza Strip currently. This is what they've part done. Of their this is what they've done to Gaza Strip, defense. and and they yeah. say that we're not going to give you uh, water, uh, 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 utilities, fuel. Uh, we're going to let your uh, medical uh, abilities uh, dwindle, mm-hmm. and we're going to basically cut you off on the supply side. Right. Um, and they're going to try to, you know, impact them at that level. Mm-hmm. And we basically, they basically said, we're not going to let up until you stop the attack mm-hmm. and you release all the hostages that you took. Right. Um, and so they have they have some authority and power to do it. Um, so you wonder, you know, what what they're really uh, trying to do other than it looks to me like the the approach is to weaken hmm. Israel to get ready for other things coming down the pike, which we know in the end times Interesting. Right. Um, is really attacked. And, and remember, we talked, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, a couple of times ago, we, we kind of got off into the United States economy a little bit, but we remember we discussed Saudi Arabia. Mm-hmm. working on a peace treaty. Right. And we even said, this is just a couple uh, times ago, uh, that the the uh, militant factions mm-hmm. were softening their demands so, mm-hmm. so that maybe there could be a workability. And in Saudi Arabia was actually promoting that is, okay, right. we'll do this, but if you, Israel, you, you Jewish Israel, you soften some of your things and the militants are willing to soften. Mm -hmm. So it looked like there was a strong movement toward a pretty good peace treaty type thing, covenant. Uh, But this has thrown the whole thing in the, in a monkey wrench. Mm -hmm. And, and by the way, we haven't heard much from Saudi Arabia. Uh, mm. so it's going to be interesting to see what, you know, cause they'll, they'll what come their out response in this, you know, is, and yeah. is that, is that peace treaty going to continue? Um, it looks like now, obviously Israel is going to harden their position right against, you know, and so, rightfully so after so-called, so-called mm-hmm. softening and say, we don't believe it. 
mm -hmm. uh, which obviously they can't <laughs> believe. Yeah. Um, but there's uh, a couple of verses as we look at, okay, what's our, what's our response and what's our understanding of it um, mm -hmm. is, uh, first of all, go to uh, Zechariah 12. Um, uh, this is talking about, this is both, you know, this is one of those scriptures where it talks about Israel per se, it talks about mm -hmm. the end, and it talks, it's going to, uh, if you, if we continue in the chapter, it would also basically talk about Christ, but uh, read verses uh, one to three and then seven to nine. And this is in sure. Zechariah 12. Okay. The burden of the word of the Lord against Israel. Thus says the Lord who stretches out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all people. All who would leave who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces though all nations of the earth are gathered against it yeah um, and then seven oh do you want go me ahead. go ahead to seven yeah and nine? go ahead and seven and nine okay the lord will save the tents of judah first so that the glory of the house of david and the glory of the inhabitants of jerusalem shall not become greater than that of judah in that day the lord will defend the inhabitants of jerusalem the one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like david and the house of david shall be like god like the angel of the Lord before them, it shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Yeah. So um, um, we look at this at various levels. So um, we know that, interesting enough, if you just take it at, at its pure uh, statement, mm -hmm. this, this all uh, is for sure fulfilled in the very end. Mm -hmm. uh, because he said the, the, the nations are going to come against Israel. Right. Um, I'm going to destroy them all. And he does. Yeah. And then sets up the millennium. And that, mm -hmm. remember, we talked about the tribulation. So uh, seven years starts with the one world government. The Antichrist uh, stands up in mid-trib and says, I'm God. And he does that in mm -hmm. Jerusalem. That, right. that introduces the wrath of God. And now there's a battle uh, between the world and Israel mm -hmm. and they all form up. They can't do it technically, which is what we're going to, you know, the, for me, as I see this unfolding right now in front of us, mm -hmm. my big question that I'm watching is <laughs> how does Israel survive this so well? It'll be interesting to watch what the mm -hmm. heck happens that they're able to survive this um, where they could be annihilated, but they're not going to be, you know? And right. so that'll be interesting. And at the end, they don't, and they come against them in the battle of Armageddon and then God destroys them all. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is all going to be fulfilled then. Um, but it also implies that the nations now that are coming against them are not going to, uh, thrive. Right. And to me, I'm going to watch that side of it as well. Mm, of, that's good. of look at, um, I think that's one of the reasons as I'm sensing, you know, the hesitation of mm -hmm. Hez Hezbollah to jump in. Mm -hmm. I think they're afraid, okay, we could jump in and we got funded by Iran, but uh, we're right next to Israel. <laughs> right. And, um, and they could, and there's actually scripture that says that um, uh, Lebanon Mm -hmm. uh, Damascus is literally going to be destroyed off the face of the earth itself. Mm. Um, I don't think this is the time, but, um, I think, I think they're afraid of that, which is why I don't right. think, I don't think they're jumping in Hamas, you know, they're so extreme. They don't even care. <laughs> right. They just don't, I don't, I don't get it. Cause they're, they're getting whacked themselves and Israel's resolved about this and they have mm -hmm. power and again, I, I don't think they're thinking through even the simplicity of, oh, they could cut off our fuel and water. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of an important little thing. <laughs> right. And uh, it's been done now, right? <laughs> it's been done and it's happening and, and, they're, and they're getting squeezed, you know, because of mm -hmm. it. Um, so I believe probably by the time this airs, it would be probable that somebody has stepped in. Mm-hmm and negotiated something to um, not to, instead of having the war escalated, they'll probably try to go the other direction 
and reopen the fuel lines, reopen the water lines and mm -hmm. get agreements on, okay, let's cease fire and let's do this, let's do that. And probably by the time this airs, and it'll be interesting to see if, if it's accurate, I would say it, it, it just likely isn't going to escalate too much further because I think if it does, I think Israel, Israel will just over, overwhelm them. Mm -hmm. um, and there'll be real negative consequences to it. Um, and then in terms of our, our perspective um, as believers, um, go to Psalm 122. Um, and this really is just a call to, uh, you know, be praying, you know, for Israel. So I love that. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and just uh, give us Psalm 122. Sure. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together where the tribes go up the tribes of the Lord to the testimony of Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord for thrones are set there for judgment. The thrones of the house of David pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord God, I will seek your good. Yeah. Uh, so that, again, as you look at the scripture, uh, it says to pray for the shalom mm -hmm. of Israel, for, of Jerusalem, um, and that they you know, live in uh, peace and prosperity, um, which is their... Uh, desire mm -hmm. there um, and and therefore we and you would pray for it on both sides of this that um, they protect themselves but they also we we pray for peace on their hearts as well when they're mm -hmm. given the opportunity to uh, stop the conflict right that they don't remember uh, vengeance is mine say at the Lord mm. and you know if you get attacked you kind of have a, a sense of vengeance as I, I not only want to win, but I want to take it out against them. Right. Right. Um, and, and we need to pray for that piece of it too, mm -hmm. that, that they don't overreact, so to speak, you know, and then of course mm -hmm. it's, it's <laughs> when you're getting attacked. Um, yeah, when I had lunch with uh, Netanyahu, uh, this is prior to nine 11. Right. And he said, well, you Americans, you know, you don't, you don't, ha you don't live like we do, um, cause you don't get attacked, mm -hmm. uh, by terrorism, but every day we do. Right. And we have the fear of it every day. And, and all we're trying and have to have shelters in their house just he, as a normal part of yeah, life. Yeah. He says, he says, you know, we're just like you, we just want to enjoy life. We want to have a uh, democratic, uh, capitalism and we would like to just live in peace. Mm -hmm. And, and our heart is not to attack anybody around us. And we don't want any of their property and we don't mm -hmm. want anything that they want, but they want ours. <laughs> right. Right. And so we have to defend ourselves and, um, it's, it is stressful, you know? And so, um, we just pray that, okay, they protect themselves, which we know is going to happen, but we pray, we literally pray for peace on all sides. Mm -hmm. Is that, I love that, you know, let's come down, go back to ceasefire. Uh, we know the conflict doesn't end here, mm -hmm. even if they agreed to end it, because it's going to pick itself back up as we head, head toward the end. So uh, I think we're just seeing, seeing a microcosm of all this happening. But think of the shift mm -hmm. is the focus right now today, as you as you look at the news, as you look at look at what's happening, it's Jerusalem and Israel. Mm -hmm. Guess what? That's what happens in the end. Um, mm. and our perspective has to start looking at, we got to pay attention to what's happening there and pay attention. And God says, you know, we'll pray for their peace on both sides of it. Um, so that mm. would, that would be our prayer today. And I, I hope by the time this airs that that has actually occurred, there's a ceasefire. Mm -hmm. Uh, they've come to, they've come to their senses, right. um, and stop the nonsense. I'm, I'm praying that Hezbollah doesn't join it. I'm praying that Iran doesn't escalate it and they just kind of get it back to, uh, down downstream, but knowing that the tension is going to still be there. So right. it's, it's kind of father, we just pray for that right now. You tell us to pray for the peace. Hmm. Uh, and we do, and we just uh, lift it up. We know that this is a moment of real conflict hmm. and tension and escalation could really, uh, change the impact, including, uh, just simple things for America of gas prices. So we just pray that, mm -hmm. uh, we will, uh, follow you. We will uh, seek your will. 
and know we know the outcome uh, and we just give us wisdom and insight as we watch this now in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for sharing. This is all very interesting, obviously very timely, something to watch and pray <laughs> yeah. and just a call to intercede for Israel for sure. Yeah. Yep. So thanks again. Look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great week, everybody. Yep. See you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments. And tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.